Wizard. We're at a SIP booth today. A SIP booth at an event. Janina, what is this event that we're at? We are at the custom show. That's right. We're at the Crazy Bumblebees and Zuckerpuppen SC customs show. And they have nice scooters, nice booths, good music, beer, coffee and pizza here. And we're going to have a look at all of that, right? Pizza. Und das alles, das schauen wir uns jetzt an, richtig? Let's go. We're walking around the customs show now to look at particularly beautiful scooters. And that's where we got stuck with this jam. This vehicle belongs to... Oliver. Hi Oliver, where are you from? I come from Saxony, the land of non-Vespa drivers. I'm one of the few people who actually ride classic scooters there. And what is the basic idea of your scooter? The basic idea actually came from the helmet. I like the Predator movies, and at one point I got myself a Predator motorcycle helmet to wear on my motorcycle rides. And on the basis of the paint and the carbon as well as the black and red anodized elements, the idea arose to build a complete scooter in this scene. It was important for me to have an overall concept in order to be able to start and to put the right parts together, among other things in your shop. <laughs> Very commendable. Do you have only pure carbon parts installed? or are they also partly decorative? The side panels are from C6 Performance, which you also sell in your shop. Otherwise, they are real carbon parts. Here at the bottom of the spoiler, for example, I installed real carbon things for motorcycling. So that's also real carbon. Here I've built a brake shoe protection out of the motor protection of a V50. But I also work with 70 carbon foil. For example, here C6 over laminated the glove box for me. So I implemented the carbon look with real carbon parts as well as decorative elements. In any case, the result is very interesting. I also think it's really nice that you used the PX SIP speedometer. I agree. Very good idea. What did you do with the engine? I installed a Malossi 221 MHR there. You have such a nice white cheek. A BFA engine would fit perfectly here. That is actually the next stage of development. This is level 1 for now. But there will definitely be a level 2. Among other things, I will also install recarbon floorboards. So, I will gradually expand the whole thing. I was happy to see your scooter here. Keep buying beautiful parts from us. Sure, I'll definitely do that. Thank you. Thank you. And see you next time. See you. When you rub against the wall and you cannot fall, so go on, go on. You know, I like powerful scooters that have a bit of power and nice big engines. Now we stand in front of a scooter that has really taken it to the extreme. And this scooter was built by Jürgen Posch. Jürgen also sells exhaust systems and is therefore already known to a few people. But please, tell me a little bit about yourself and the scooter. I once bought a BFA motor and it was really extremely powerful. And with such a normal PX chassis, there was always the problem that you just couldn't ride out all of the performance. That's why I came up with the idea of designing a body, especially for the BFA engine. That's how this project came about. I lengthened the wheelbase, extended the fork and cut away a bit of the rear so that the engine could fit underneath. That means the whole scooter is longer and lower to the street to be more stable. Exactly. This is a very complex conversion, very interesting and very well done. But now let's get to what's really interesting. How many cc has your engine? It has 407 cc and street legal 60 HP, and that's how it's registered too. What should be mentioned, 
This 400cc cylinder was developed by EGIC for the BFA engine. So for people for whom 300cc and 40 to 50 HP are still not enough. With this cylinder, you can get a little more out of it. And Jürgen was one of the first to install the cylinder in the scooter. The whole thing is really spectacular. The peak performance was measured with 73 HP. But as I said, for road legality reasons, we restricted the performance to 60 HP. What's the fastest speed that you've ridden on the scooter so far? The fastest I dared to drive was 160 kmh, according to GPS tracking. The scooter could easily drive faster, but let's be honest, I would need a race track or some kind of close track for that. This is a piston dummy showing the size of the piston. That's really neat. Okay, great. Okay, super. Good. Jürgen? Jürgen, thank you very much. It was really nice to see you. I'll call you soon. You bet. Now we are here at this very beautiful and simplistic small frame and the owner is standing right next to me. Hello, I'm Mario and this is my small frame. After two years I finally managed to fix it up and now thank godness I've finished. I think the color scheme is one that is currently quite on vogue. It's the old 80s BMW design. It is. What engine did you install? That's an e 250. I was one of the first to get it around one and a half to two years ago. And I combined it with a Quadrini engine. I tested it quite a lot and also tried out some of my own exhaust systems. That was actually quite good. I have to say that it's actually very stable now. Does that mean it is also suitable for everyday use? I first drove with 50 HP, but with the current exhaust I've cranked it down to 44 to 45 HP. And with that it runs great. It fits really well. As I see you have installed a reasonable brake here. Yes, yes, of course. This is a Magura Hi-Mac. And down here I installed a stage 6 4 piston brake system. I completely reinforced the frame on the inside too. I welded in a flat bar so that the whole thing is really stable and can no longer be twisted. Because the twistability of the small frame was always very noticeable. Here you can also see a very nicely embedded clean temperature display. Looks great, right? And this Moto gadget here is 3D printed. I also installed a large PLC tank. I think it's a very nice and simplistic high-tech racer. I like it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. All right, thanks. Until next time. See you. Now I found someone for whom we wouldn't actually have to drive that far because he lives right next door. But he brought a very nice Lambretta. Please, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Alex and I've been in the scooter scene for 30 years. I've had this Lambretta since about 1994. I've driven it in a resto mode version for a long time, but I've always dreamed of a metal flake finish. Alex metal. Looking at the scooter, Alex wouldn't have needed to say that he always dreamt of metal flake. The scooter was painted by Fabrizio Cauduro, who also painted the SIP Sprinter. He gave everything here again. Metal flake quality like this is really hard to come by. What I personally like is that the whole thing was implemented on a Lambretta DL200. And as we have already explained in our Lambretta 101 video with Jockey, this scooter is like the holy grail for Lambretta drivers. Next to TV200 or an SX200, yes. How many of these were built? 9350. Anyone 
who owns something like this today, usually only does original restorations. That's why I think it's so awesome that Alex just walks up and says, I've always dreamt of Metal Flake, so I'll just do it. I'd say the scooter lives from the paintwork, but you could do a little more. For example, a bigger engine or a hydraulic disc brake. But I drive the thing and don't put it away. That's why I kept it relatively functional from the technical side. So the engine is basically designed for touring, because you actually drive the thing? Yes, exactly. I like that. DL200 Metal Flake actually driving it to events. Hats off, Alex. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Gesko. Until next time. my final stop in front of this scooter. This is a Mike Tilch scooter. Unfortunately, I don't have him as an interview partner right now because he's walking around somewhere. But Mike always builds very elaborate and very beautiful custom scooters. I think this is a very nice, simple umbrella with a very nice paint finish and a very cool idea and implementation. The basis is the first BMW M3 in the racing version, which he has implemented in the paintwork. The scooter is also a Jet 200, by the way. I love it, and I ride that scooter myself. He even implemented the original seat design in the seat, and for the side panels, he used fasteners from the racing sector. This Mike Tilch scooter is definitely my personal best of show. My personal highlight are these watches, which were used to take lap times in rallying. Note that these are in fact from Hanhardt, a famous manufacturer of stopwatches. Even there, he showed great attention to detail and set this up very nicely. That's it from the Crazy Bumblebees and Zuckerpuppen SC Customs Show. A very nice event with a lot of nice scooters. If you were there too, let us know in the comments how you liked the event. I definitely had fun. The party is slowly getting started and that's what I intend to do as well. The bar is calling and I want to have a beer. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time. Bye. We're here live from Gundelfingen. Janina, tell me. Do you know which finger can't make a single woman happy? Welchen Finger man keine einzige Frau glücklich machen kann? I think that's the Gundelfinger. I think so too. <laughs> Our standard is next level again today. Lift your feet, the joke's coming low.